Alrighty, well, good morning everybody. Um, I thought I would uh, go ahead and do today what I did um, did yesterday. This is just going to be um, a video of me just talking about stuff with um, with various kinds of music running in the background. Um, right now I have what's called Dark Monastery Gregorian Chants. And I've heard a little taste of this before I actually started making this video. Um... And it's pretty much just that, some dark mo some dark themed Gregorian chant music. Um, and in case anyone gets any wonderings about this, no, I'm not a devil worshiper. But I do I do enjoy listening to this kind of music from time to time. The only drawback on this video here is there is a lot of there's a lot of animation on it. I mean I just want a still picture. But like I said, this is the music out here is too good to ignore. Even with the, uh, the extra video animation crap, you know. But like I like I said, I just enjoy listening to this kind of music. Um, I'm the kind of guy that listens to just about anything, except uh, most country, most rap music, and most pop music. I mean, there's a whole I mean, there's a whole world of other genres of music that you can be listening to out there, and I've known people throughout throughout my life that like like. I can't believe you. Like, you only listen to country music. Like, that's it. I've, I've like I've known people like this. Like, they only listen to one genre of music. I knew a guy. He he was a white guy who basically tried to talk black. You know, for real, homie. Yeah, man. I'd be all about getting that cheddar and shit. Get the stacks of paper, bitch. That kind of thing. He and he would only listen to rap music. Maybe he would listen to rock music once in a while, but if it was, it'd be the kind of stuff that you hear on the radio. Freebird. But other than that, if at least 90% of what he listened to was rap. Like, that's it. So, people like that really bug me. I mean, again, there's a whole host of other genres that, of music that you can listen to. So many, you know, so much other types of music and whatnot that you can listen to that you don't have to restrict. Why would you want to restrict yourself to one single genre. But, yeah. Uh, quick sound check. Okay, so it's not coming in too loud. Um, uh, but I did, um, but the, the I did try, uh, uploading, um, uh, I tried uploading, a yesterday's video to YouTube, and it worked. It didn't get flagged for copyright or anything, so I'm like, yeah! So, I'm on the start of something because it's an abs it's an absolute bitch to upload anything on YouTube. I mean, I'm I'm on Twitch. I mean, it's a lot long. It takes a lot longer to process. Um, but um, on the up on the upside, you ain't gotta worry about it being flagged for copyright like you do on YouTube. I mean, on Twitch, all they're gonna do if there's anything that uh, violates copyright, all they're gonna do is they're just gonna mute just only that offending piece of material that's violating the copyright and even then all they're going to do is mute it they're not going to like paste an ad over it or anything like that so but again nobody I mean nobody nobody really watches any of my YouTube videos I have to I have to actually post them on my uh, Final Fantasy 14 blog in order for pe in order for in order to get any recognition out of them, so I basically have to upload these on both YouTube and Twitch. So, whereas uh, again, probably goes without saying, but uh, my stuff is far more likely to get recognized on YouTube than Twitch. But on the downside, it's a basically a high risk, high reward proposition. Um, if um. Uh, if it doesn't get flagged for copyright, great. More people are going to check it out. But on the downside, if it does get flagged for copyright, I have to delete it because I refuse to have ads put in put on any of my videos because I fucking hate them with a passion. I I don't need. I mean, if I care. I mean, if I cared enough to. If I cared enough to buy shampoo, I mean, I could just go down to Walmart and just do price comparisons on what's already on the shelf. I don't need the internet to tell me what's the best kind and all that. I mean, 
I just go out to the store and plan that out myself. Or go on the internet and Google, Google best shampoo. And then it'll probably give you a whole bunch of different comparisons, consumer reports, you know, all sorts of computer, consumer magazines that rate them all. Amazon does that, I think. You know, race the shampoo brands. I mean, I don't need somebody to stick an ad in my face telling me this. So, that's why I'm very anti-ad. And then on top of that, um, on one end, I really want to, I would really like to tell some of these guys that put up their own websites to, you know, go get a job. You know, cause, you know, look, if, you know, if, for those that, uh, whose ads are used, you know, if they're, if they're, their main source of income is, is a looking at ads and whatnot, you know, I mean, it, I'm, I'm still trying, I'm still trying to, trying to process it, trying to get the words out, but, you know, Personally, I would rather just hold down a real job and then create my content and put it out there for free than to not have a real job and rely on ads, ads as my source of income. You know, because because uh, things like people, things like that are what causes the anti-ad blocker ads to pop up. Like I'll go, on, I I use an ad blocker, but um, I'll go on a website. And, I'll get this big pop-up that says, we noticed that you're using an anti-ad block, or we noticed that you're using an ad blocker. Please turn it off in order to proceed in this website. I see that, I say, fuck you, I'm gone. I'll just, I'll just type down whatever, I'll just go to another website that doesn't have one. So, you know, it's, ads pay for our content or whatever, ads pay our bills, you know. So it, it's something like that. I would rather just hold down a real, I would rather just have a real job like Walmart than to sit here and all, not have a, not work, not have to work at Walmart, but then rely on ads for everything, you know, because end up feeling like a damn douchebag otherwise. I mean, now, now, unless, uh, unless you're making mad cash, you know, making ads, like if you're, if you're making 50 grand a year, you know, 50 grand a year just on the ads that uh the ads on your website I guess I could I could understand that but if not you know again sorry to sound like a broken record but I would just as soon as uh I would just as soon as just have a real job so okay so so that pretty much concludes my rant on that oh and um as stated on my previous video, this is um, the way I'm doing this, the way I'm talking. It's going to be a stream of consciousness type uh, type video. It, I'm just going to say whatever's on my mind. I don't I don't have fixed subject matter that I talk about. I, I don't use a playlist. Um, in that sense, it's kind of like the Joe Rogan podcast. He never used a format either. Um, him and his guest or guests as the case may be they just talk about whatever's on their minds and they just let the chat flow from one subject to another um i intend to do it i intend to do the same thing as well so well yeah and hopefully um hopefully i'll get an answer from my um from my auto repair shop uh tomorrow morning or tuesday my um my car is uh it's got a gas leak and uh it reeks pretty bad especially when you're right uh, as obvious as it might sound especially when you're right close to my car you know open the door and sit inside it's, it smells like gas big time um on top of that although the auto mechanics showed me a trick to bypass this but it would also vapor lock when you try to start it I mean, it was slow to start. You turn the key. You know, and then it would start up. But it, it, it'll take like 10 seconds to start up. But the auto mechanic guy, he actually said if you do what's called priming the ignition, priming the ignition, you turn the key on, but you leave it on. For, you don't actually start the car up. You just leave it in the on position for several seconds first. And you'll kind of hear like a little little machine wine noise in the back and then 
let it do that for a few seconds, then turn the key. I mean, it starts right up. So, that's what I've been relying on. Uh, but, yeah. And I, like I said, I'm hoping to get an ant. I'm hoping to get an answer or get some kind of appointment either. Um, or I should say today, today or tomorrow. You know, especially considering that I'm having to pay $750 to have all this fixed. Like, it needs a new, uh, it needs a new fuel line. And it needs, uh, called a VVAP line. Like, it's where the, like, the evaporated gas goes or something like that. I don't know the specific specifics of it, but, uh, he said, um, uh, it is the cause of my uh, car not having problems starting. It's because that evap line is on the fritz. So. Oh, and speaking of, uh, speaking of that, uh, my refrigerator got fixed. And I was the reason why, I was one of the reasons why the, um, refrigerator wasn't working. I never knew how important it was that you keep the refrigerator door closed at all times. Because I would often either A, just, if my mom, if I'm grabbing food, if I'm grabbing food out of the refrigerator, I just left the door open. Like, I would bring my food, you know, my grapes or, like, my grapes or my, um, my, uh, my protein shake or whatever. I just leave the door wide open. I mean, no sense sitting there opening it and then closing it, then opening it, then closing it, then opening it, then closing it. It just got, it would just be tedious, but apparently that is what you're supposed to do. You don't want to let any of that cold air, too much of that cold air out of the fridge. So, and then uh, there was a second problem too, is uh, even when I actually did try to shut the door, it wouldn't shut all the way. It would, it would, it do, I mean, it wouldn't do what it does now. Like it practically automatically closes. You just have to give that door a little tiny nudge and then it would slowly completely close itself. It never used to do that. So, so. That problem got fixed. So now I don't have to leave my food outside in the in the balcony in my apartment where the weather is often in the 30s and 40s to keep the stuff cool. So. Um, let me think what else. But yeah, I'm really hoping that my um my car gets fixed either today or tomorrow because Wednesday my work week starts back up. So that's when I'm not... I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of need it to get to work. And um, yeah, and I, I really don't want to have to. I don't want to have to walk all the way home, and then turn around later and have to walk all the way, all the way back to the auto mechanic to get my car. So, I mean, it might sound like a first. I mean, it might probably sounds like a first world problem since I have to walk a half a mile to the auto repair shop whereas most people would have to drive for miles to get to their auto repair shop I mean but I mean like I said it's a, probably a first world problem compared to most but it is what it is so yep going back to work on Wednesday where I gotta deal with managers who haven't been at their job nearly as long as I have or I have managers who've never done my job trying to tell me how to do my job. I mean, the most they should say is, Joe, you're working in dairy tonight. And then just trust me to take care of everything else or, or you know, try to shoot for everything being done by 5 a.m. You know, or, you know, like some kind of, some kind of deadline, but that's it. After that, just leave me to it. something else too oh and um something else I started doing um so far I'm not liking it much but it'll probably it'll probably clear up a lot of blank points in these uh videos um I did write down a list of bullet points but uh, I only want to refer to these when I'm when I'm out of things to talk about but it looks like I've um it looks like I've actually already car already covered covered most of them. Um, I did um. Uh, I think uh, last night I watched a a video book. I don't know the technical name for it, but uh, it's based on a 
It's based on a manga by a guy named Junji Ito. It's called Army of One. But I kind of talked about this yesterday on my previous video, but I'm, I don't really read books here at home. Um, I read them at work, but I, I gotta kind of, I tend to read some uh, controversial stuff, or I read stuff that might alienate my coworkers, or I'm, actually my close coworkers probably wouldn't care much. It's the, um, it's the, for lack of a better word, innocent people that would come in. Um, I wouldn't want them asking, hey, what, you know, coming up to me, hey, what book are you reading? Oh, I'm reading this book uh, about Junji Ito. Yeah, it's about um. It's about this, um, it's about this, this, um, this cult group that goes around killing people and then they sew their, they sew their bodies together with fishing line and show them a picture and my, oh my god, that's gross, ah! Because, uh, people in my land, people in my neck of the woods love to gossip. And, um, you know, and I'm not, um, uh, I'm not a conformist or anything. I, I don't, I'm not 100% worried about what other people think of me, but, you know, these are the same people that I have to deal with or I have to be with every single day. So it is not a cowardice or anything, but I don't like rocking the boat. Because again, pe people rem people in my neck of the woods like to gossip and um, and they tend to remember stuff like this. I mean, they generally have long memories, so. So uh, if I can remember to get back to what it was I was saying. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, I watched the, don't I don't know what to call it it's a, a book on video with some background music and stuff um, again it's called army of one but uh, it's like a it's kind of a kind of a pro solitude book really interesting stuff but as far as horror goes this guy's my favorite um, it wasn't unlike um, other horror stuff that I grew up with Friday the 13th it got to a point where I was just guessing where the next jump scare was going to come from. I mean, didn't really horrify me or anything. Um, you know, our Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where for the most part, it was just a girl running screaming. Ah! While a guy, while a fat guy chasing her on the chainsaw. You know, it didn't do anything for me. I mean, her... Her being in hysterics kind of creeped me out a little bit, but that was about it. Uh, you know, with stuff, you know, stuff like that, stuff I grew up with, didn't really do anything for me. I mean, Exorcist was another one. I actually found that to be a very that didn't do any nothing for me at all. In fact, I think when I first watched it, I first I watched it with a friend of mine, and um, I think we actually found it to be very quotable. We're like, like a like a the ass, Karis. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. You know, or... How long do you plan on staying in Reagan? <laughs> he barfs out the pea soup. It's just funny as hell. Then, this all is mine. Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. You know, it just... I mean, like I said, it's very quotable. A lot of funny moments in there. So it... But, uh... Reading stuff by Junji Ito, though, it's like really fascinating, for lack of a better word. But it, but again, on the downside, I can only um, I can only read stuff like this either, either here, on YouTube, which not my favorite way of reading, or I'd have to do it work where I have to basically be secretive about it. I would rather say, oh, I'm reading Rolling Stone magazine. Oh, okay, and then, be, and then they'd be on their way. And I have, um, then I have, you know, and then to say, oh, I'm reading Junji Ito. Hey, check this out. Oh, God, that's gross. And then everybody, like, avoids me like the plague for the next week or so. And then everybody starts talking to me differently. Everybody starts treating me different. You know, that kind of thing. So. But, but, yeah, like I said, and then, um, then after after thinking about that, I think I watched a, uh, I watched a, uh, I watched one clip earlier, and uh, I plan on watching one or two more of Saw, the first one. I saw like maybe a little tiny part part of it like many years ago, but again, it didn't do anything for me. So 
I might do the same thing with uh, Silence of the Lambs as well. Del everybody, um, a lot of people consider that to be a really creepy show. But again, I only saw it one time many years ago. I, I thought it was I thought it was watchable, but it wasn't anything that had me going, oh my god, or anything like that. So. Okay. Need a drink of water. My throat's getting parched. But yeah, so... So far, I'm liking this imagery. I mean, again... I mean, so far, I'm liking this music, too. But, uh, again... I don't care for the animation. I don't care for the animation, but I like everything else about it. Um, but yeah, when I conclude this video and try to get it uploaded to YouTube, I hope it don't get flagged for copyright. Because, like I said, they're... If it gets flagged, I'm going to have to delete it. And that means it's going to be Twitch only, in which few, if any, people are going to check it out. But at least I can upload it under the radar. So they're much more lenient with the copyright rules than uh, YouTube is. So. Uh, i trying to think of something else. Oh, yeah, um, one other thing, and then I'm going to have to close out. I, um, I think, um, uh, oh, it, it's got to do with Guild Wars 2. Um, listening to some of the things people say in chat, um, and, um, uh, some of the experiences I've gone through, I've actually, um, when I was streaming, I think it was, like, a few days ago, um, I was talking to a guy named Jay Hot Laps about this, but um, I've had, it's just um in the game in that game for those that have never played it, when you um when your health is taken to zero, you're not you're not officially dead. You're in what's called a down state where you can still you can still do a small amount of moves. But you, you kind of you kind of have two different health bars in that game. When your first when your main health meter gets taken down to zero, you'll be down. But you can still do a small amount of things, but not many. Um, and then you're basically have you're basically given a second health bar. When that health bar reaches zero, then you're out. You're you're quote unquote dead. So, but uh, during any of the, any either when you're down or when you're out during that any any period of that time somebody can come and they can click on you and try to revive you now it takes it takes an average of, average of 10 seconds for someone to revive you but if two people revive you that's that's cut down to about five seconds three people and that's cut down to an average time of two and a half seconds you kind of get what I'm getting at here well it's starting to piss it was starting to piss me off because uh in chat, whenever whenever we're, we're fighting a world boss, somebody will just say, "If you die, just take the waypoint back," which it's kind of a dick thing to do. I mean, I I kind of get it somewhat. Sometimes, if somebody uh, if somebody drops because they're surrounded by a by AOE lightning, let's say, that deals damage over time. Yeah, you don't want to revive somebody when that's when that's up. But how about when it isn't? I mean, basically, it only takes, at worst, about 10 seconds of your time to revive somebody. And even faster, more people, more people would do it. So, and, um, but yeah, it was really pissing me off when people say this. And, um, usually it's, uh, when you die, take the waypoint back. But sometimes, that waypoint is so far away from the action. You're talking about, it can be as bad as a 30 second run back. That's a long ways to travel. Again, it would only take three or four people, just a few sec, a few seconds of their time to revive that person, get them up and running, just like that. So, after thinking about that, I kind of came to the conclusion that the wonderful, awesome community that Guild Wars 2 has is a myth. 
Guild Wars 2, the community, is no different than World of Warcraft, than Final Fantasy XIV, than um, ESO, I've never played it, uh, Black Desert Online, never played it, but I'm, it, it's no different, as far as community goes, it is no different than any other MMO. Um, as misanthropic as it might sound, if, if, a, if an MMO is played by human beings, then you're going to have to deal with some toxicity. You're going to have to deal with assholes no matter what MMO you play. I don't believe in a awesome, wonderful community. I don't believe in that anymore, especially after going through what I've been going, what I've gone through uh, in my time playing Guild Wars 2. I mean, hell, now that I think about it, it was one of the biggest reasons why my main character is named good old Charlie Brown. Because when I first started running dungeons and what um, and what are called fractals. I think they're they're basically non-storyline dungeons, and they often have debuffs and very specific mechanics, etc. You know, stuff like that. But anyway, um, I'm having a hard time trying to navigate these things. Never been there before. I keep falling off ledges. Um, I keep getting camera screwed. Self-explanatory. It's where you're getting screwed by a camera angle where you can't see a damn thing. It's too dark. I get lost. And eventually, it results in me getting vote kicked. I just get booted out of the dungeon. And once in a great while, I get lucky when somebody says, Hey, where are you? I'm... I don't know what to type down because I really don't know where I am because I'm lost. Eventually, I get booted. I get booted from the dungeon. So I'm like, Okay, so yeah, I see how it is. Alright. So this is what we're gonna... So this is how it's gonna be for me. So about around that time, I came up with the name good old Charlie Brown because this is the kind of luck I'm going to have. But again, you know, I'm getting I'm getting booted from dungeons. Same thing that's happened to me when playing Final Fantasy XIV. Same thing that's happened to me back when I was playing um, World of Warcraft. Got booted out of those dungeons too. So, I guess uh, the TLDR, the community in Guild Wars 2 is no better than any other. So, um, but, but um, otherwise, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, call it good here. Um, I gotta, I gotta eat breakfast, and um, there's still, um, there's still other stuff I gotta do, like um, get this um, get this uh, video all prepped up and all that, and get it uploaded to Twitch and YouTube. So, still gonna be pretty busy a while. But otherwise, hey, um, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening. Um, I appreciate that, and if all goes well with this one too. Um, I might start doing more of these in the future. Ideally, I will try to shoot for uh, posting one of these every day, um, except maybe on uh, except maybe on my work days, because at around this time I'll be at work, so obviously, but maybe something to shoot for on my uh, on my days off. So, but until then, though, once again, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening, and see you all next time.